Happy Tuesday. Home equity conversion mortgage. Today is the day you're going to find out about what a home equity conversion mortgage is, also known as a HECM. Uh, it's an awesome FHA program that's used to help people uh, take advantage of some of the equity in their home. And in Southern California, we know that is a big deal. And to discuss that, we have the expert on our show, and he's my partner on Tuesdays to talk about this very thing. We've got Shane Sletter. Hey, Shane, how are you doing today? No, it's great. I just, um, I love the education that you're providing to our listeners and to me, and I get to get questions answered that I, I've had questions about Heckums for a long time, and then now to have you kind of here in my corner and talking about the same thing, I think it's really awesome. So why don't you start out and tell us a little bit about um, about what a Heckum is and how it was, like, why what it's designed to do. Now, when you talk about FHA and the HUD, Housing and, Urban, Housing and Urban, Urban Development and the Federal Housing Authority, those two programs are designed to protect the consumer, correct? Okay. And it always, and the reason I say that is because not all loans against a home, not all equity tapping you know, financial instruments are FHA or HUD based or HUD guaranteed or HUD approved loans. There's a lot of stuff out there that is non FHA, non HUD to get basically to do different things to kind of pull money out of your, you know, out of the equity in your house. And we're talking about FHA, HUD based programs, and that's the this home equity conversion mortgage. So tell us about, um, about the conversion. So you have to be 62. And then how is it based? Is it based on home equity? Is it based on income? Do you have to make payments on it? What do people use the money for? That's incredible. I mean, that that 
that eats into your fixed income in a big way. And the credit card companies are usually more than willing to open more lines of credit and open more lines and give more credit cards with higher interest rates and more problems. And it just it just becomes this it, this vicious cycle of credit card debt just going up and up and up. And and I you know where where I've seen that is where you have seniors that they're just having trouble just barely squeaking by and then something comes up. They now need to make a payment towards medical or they have something that comes up to meet their basic needs. So they use their credit card and maybe it's only a hundred bucks or 200 bucks. And then it happens again next month and it's another a hundred or 200. And then it happens again the next month. And then they go and buy something on credit and it's only $35 a month. But, but by the time it adds up, you're 100, 200, $300 a month in payments. And then they just fall behind. Then they go into default. Now you are telling me though, that you have a plan and we and we're not going to get through it before we take our first stop but um that you have a plan and you you'd emailed it to me to talk about and i just thought that was a great great plan as far as like helping seniors that have kind of gotten into this loop where they 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 incurred debt incurred credit card debt and they just can't get back out but now they've got the minimum credit card payments that they have to make and then they still have the need for more cash and yet these may be people that are sitting on equity in their home. And there's a way then that you're going to explain is how do you convert that? How do you get the equity out of your home as a senior without making the problem even worse? Um, before we do take our break, you still have um, you have the deal like you have a free um, home equity conversion conversion mortgage guide. And that's still available, right? If they text reverse. Okay. Okay, so it's a free guide. There's no strings attached. It's something it, you know, listen to the show. You can go re-listen to the show on our podcast, but um get the guide, just text the word reverse to 858-683-1716, and then that will get the free guide sent out to you. It's it's not a difficult read. It's not super long. It's just a guide so you can kind of have it more explained to you, especially if you're driving in the car. Just remember, send reverse, the word reverse to 858-683-1716. And um, Shane will get that guide directly out to you. You're listening to The Word on Wealth. we got Shane Sletter, who is our mortgage advisor, mortgage expert. Coming up next, more from Shane Sletter.
All right, happy to be with you today. Happy you're along with um, me, Attorney Gary Quackenbush, and our friend and mortgage expert, Shane Sletter. Shane, our question is how to take advantage of equity in our homes, and this would be for seniors 62 and over. It just doesn't feel like a senior, by the way, but I know they are. So 62 and over, and uh, they are kind of stuck in this loop where they just can't get out from under their credit card, and you have a a great idea that you were going to bring up uh, regarding using the home equity conversion mortgage. Awesome. Yeah, the way you describe it, it, so much of what we do is our perception. And I I, I, I just, I, I'm kind of cracking up because the way you describe that, you know, pe people say, oh, I don't know about a reverse mortgage. I, I, I'm going to, I'll lose my home. It's like, no, you actually won't. So instead I'm going to take out cash out loans. <laughs> and then the way you describe it is, you're, you know, you are exactly doing what you think you don't want to ever do. And that is you're going backwards. Your loan is getting higher and higher and higher. And, at, you know, it's just, it's so interesting from this perspective and of an expert like yours, like you're doing exactly what you say you don't want to do, but you're doing it in a, in a way that is so much more expensive and so much more painful. So let's just do it right. So I, I, um, I love this option. This is really cool. So the, um, the another thing, and, and you, Jim Robeson, our, our, the uh, uh, Medicare answer guy, our buddy, and he was telling me, he said that he, you know, regarding the, the home equity conversion mortgage, he was saying, ask Shane if there's a way to convert your home equity into regular monthly income that you can buy a, a Medicare supplement plan and have permanent insurance for the rest of your life. I went, that totally sounds like a Shane Jim combination. So can you talk about that a little bit?
you know, let me explain why I really appreciate what you just said. I've had more than one occasion where I've talked to the children of the senior that got a reverse mortgage. And the problem, the, the, the thing that scared the kids is that there was a, a reverse mortgage and they, it just, it was, it was screwed up in my opinion. Cause basically what happened is the, the reverse mortgage basically just gave this woman cash. Like they stuck like $300,000 in her bank account, just like one chunk. And because it was there and because she was working on, you know, kind of upgrading her home, it was almost like, well, it's just there. And so she spent 50, then 75, then 80, then 125. She spent all this money on stuff that just seemed like she was getting kind of almost ripped off because she had that money. And I see that where people, you know, especially the kids kind of watching mom and dad and, you know, do, you know, kind of helping them being careful, watching their spending. That's their biggest fear is that mom and dad are going to grab the money and then be like vulnerable and start spending too much and then not realize they're being taken. But you've explained this to me before where you do this 10 year payment thing. They, they, that is set up while the, the senior has full capacity of their mind and brain. They've made the decision to do it, and it was part of the plan that can be implemented. And then if it gets, as happens as we get older, it gets more and more difficult to make decisions and choices, and you might become more and more vulnerable. But you've got this payment set up that it is just a set payment, and it's not like you all of a sudden have an extra hundred grand in your bank account. And it's like, whoopee, what are we going to do with that money? So I, I love that part because I have a lot of people that are just short some money. I mean, literally they budget it out and they go, I'm short $435 a month. Like, well, that doesn't seem like a lot. You're sitting on $800,000 of equity. Talk to Shane. Now, you have mentioned before exactly what you're talking about is kind of getting set up to this. And that's what I want our listeners, Shane, to really understand is the way you are set up is if somebody wants to have this conversation to get options available and decide whether it just you whether you just want the senior couple coming in or whether they want to involve children or not. Tell us a little bit about how what that looks like when you know somebody's just thinking about I don't know how reverse mortgages work I don't understand the heckam and I want to have that information. How did people get a hold of you so that they can have that conversation with you and get educated?
Ladies and gentlemen, this is unique to Shane. Okay, this is why he is a partner on our show on the Word on Wealth, because he's willing to do that. And you know that with all of our partners, they're willing to talk to our listeners and give them options. The number is 858-683-1716. 858-683-1716. You can call and get an appointment with Shane. Uh, you can see how easy he's going to make it. You can also text that number, the word reverse to 858-683-1716 and get your free reverse mortgage and Heckam guide. So do that, get that guide, get an appointment with Shane and figure out your options. Shane, thank you so much for being a partner of the show and being on today. Home equity conversion mortgage, it is just something that we all need to know about. It's it, To me, it, it's interesting. Um, Shane Sletter, he's our, he's our mortgage expert. Um, he's an expert in reverse mortgages and conventional mortgages. And they're basically, I mean, in my small, limited 
expertise or understanding of the area is like you have a regular mortgage, which um, amortizes, meaning as you pay on it for 30 years, you get interest that it goes up by a certain amount of interest. And as you pay it down, you pay down the interest, plus you pay down the principal and you pay it off over the next 15 to 30 years. And by that time, if it's 30 years, you've paid off the house probably three different times. It's just the regular mortgage that we all know and deal with. Um, then you have a interest only mortgage, which doesn't amortize zero amortization, meaning it doesn't go, it doesn't get reduced. It's if you borrowed $200,000, you will always owe that $200,000. But to keep it that way, you pay the interest only, called an interest only loan. Hey, what do you know? Then you have the reverse mortgage, which it reverse amortizes, meaning you don't pay the principal because it's not required under the loan contract and you don't have to pay the interest. So by not paying the interest, the loan just goes up by the amount of interest each month. That's what's called reverse amortizing. We just shorten it to reverse. And we can use those loans to access equity, convert equity by using a home equity conversion mortgage. That's what we're talking about. And Shane has great ideas. Get his free book. That's what I recommend. Get his free book, 858-683-1716 and text the word reverse and talk to him. He's a great guy. If he weren't, he wouldn't be on my show. We wouldn't have on the word on wealth because we don't, we have really carefully vetted professionals and experts on this show that help out. So to tell you how the rest of the week is going to go, we had Shane Sledder today talking about mortgages. Tomorrow we have Ken Pecos, who is our real estate expert. And we've got some great stuff to talk about tomorrow. Um, it's actually going to be a little off, not off the wall, but it's going to be a very unique approach to um, real estate. And then Thursday, we have Anthony Wright. Friday, we have our Finding Joy Friday. Okay. If you want to be part of the show, if you have a question for me regarding estate planning, wills, trusts, power of attorneys, um, the documentation you might need, issues with successor trustees. <coughs> That's my baby. That's what I do every day. I'm happy to take your calls right here on the show. 888-344-1170. We're opening lines right now. So we're going to go right to the top of the hour. 888-344-1170. You can call and ask me and let me answer your question here on the air. I'm a California attorney. So if you're going to call me from Texas and ask for Texas advice, I'm just going to remind you that I'm a California attorney and advise you to find somebody in Texas, but we can do anything in California. I'm licensed in California and Colorado, but currently I'm only active in California. So I stick to California. Um, as far as the your estate plan, when I review estate plans for people, one of the things I'm doing is I'm kind of counting paperwork. I'm counting documents to make sure that what you have together is correct. And the they're just things that I think are important. Now, let me tell you a story. Um, case had a, while, uh, had a case a while ago. Um, so the guy that I was representing was technically the niece's husband. Okay. So what happened is... Okay, there's two different. I want to go. I'm going to do. No, I'm going to do a different one. Okay, so this is even better for. This is more more appropriate to the situation. Okay, so what had happened is this. Um, we'll just. I'm just going to. It's the uncle. So the uncle wanted to help get a an estate plan together for his sister. So he really, really wanted to do it. He really wanted to help out. She didn't have much money. She did own a home, but she was kind of tight. Um, and I guess if it were in, in if it were the Shane Sledder time, she probably didn't, you know, she didn't want to get money out of her house, which, you know, that happens sometimes. But she just said, I don't want to get a lawyer. I don't want to do it. And so her brother said, fine, downloaded a program or bought a program. This is back when everything came on CD. So he bought a program in this fancy plastic box and he opened it up and it had the CD that he stuffed into his computer. and the CD, basically, when he put in the, the basic information about name, and unfortunately, he didn't get all the terms right, because it said, who is the trust maker, who is the trustee, who is the beneficiary, and 
he got some of the terms right because trust maker obviously is the person that is creating the trust. I would call them a trustor, a settlor, a grantor, or the person making the trust, you know, the person that's wanting the trust. And then um, it said, who's the trustee? <clears throat> so he put in the initial successor trustee, which isn't the right answer. <clears throat> the question is, who's the trustee? And if it's a living trust, that the trust maker, the creator of the trust and the trustee are the same person initially, okay? Because the trust converts when somebody dies or becomes incapacitated. So he just put in the name of the successor trustee as the, as the trustee. And then the documentation started, to, it, it created a trust and it printed that out it, and it was into a Word document. It printed out the trust and then it printed out a separate will and it printed out a financial power of attorney. Then it had a healthcare power of attorney. Then it had a deed to the house. Then it had a, And so he started reading through the documents. And why I found out later is I got this, the client that's now coming in, um, the, the woman had passed away. So now it's her kids, right? So this would have been their uncle that did the drafting. So the kids now brought it in and said, yeah, mom passed away and this is her trust. Well, what the guy did is he he looked at this and went, this is stupid, dumb attorneys. There's a will that says, I give all my stuff to my trust. And there's a trust that says, I give all my stuff to my kids. And there's a power of attorney that says, if I, um, you know, if, if I'm assigning this particular person to manage my money for me. And then there's a healthcare power of attorney that said, this person is assigned to my healthcare. And so what he decided is it was foolish to have four or five or six documents. And so he just really put them all together. So you had the trust and then he cut and pasted the will into the trust where he thought it would be appropriate. And then he had where it was saying the trustee had the powers to do certain things. He stuck in the power of attorney language. And while he was there, he put in the healthcare. So basically made this one long document with everything all crammed together because he was thinking, well, why would you sign and notarize each document independently? That's just a waste of time. So he put it all together in one big, huge document, got it notarized, and his sister died. What a mess. The goal of a trust a lot of times is to stay out of probate court. Where were we? Well, as soon as the client brought the information in, in this big trust that nobody could even understand, we were in probate court. We are in probate court on an 850 petition, which is a petition saying, hey, judge, this is so messed up. We're having trouble determining what we need to do. So we need instructions. So we had to go and pick it apart. And the judge was at part of it. And he, she said, I, I can totally see what's going on. What do you want me to do? And I you know, basically was in the explanation of we, we need to separate all these documents because what happened is the trust became invalid. Because you had language regarding healthcare, language regarding power of attorney, language regarding trust. And when you mix it up, it becomes invalid. So basically, the, the effect of what uncle did was made it so there was no trust at all. It wasn't valid. So we went into the court and said, well, we don't really want to take this through a formal probate petition and pretend like there's no trust. We want the court to recognize that there is a valid trust because the kid's mom really tried. She, re she wanted, she didn't want to do it wrong. So the best she could do is get her brother to do it because he promised he could. So we had the court go and kind of pick through and agree that this, this section was thrown out. This section was tossed out. The healthcare section was tossed out and we pieced it together till we had a valid trust. And the court ordered that that document there was the valid trust that we could go ahead and administer. So the kids were thrilled because we didn't have to go through this, you know, the year and a half long probate process. We just got this instructions from the attorney or from the court ordering what should happen. Now, the reason that's important is I couldn't sell the house because we don't have readable instructions. The court made it so there were readable instructions, i.e. a trust that we could interpret and understand. So the court order was, Yes, it's a trust. And yes, the beneficiaries are the children. And yes, the trustees are also, you know, one of the oldest kids. So it was a determination of like who is in charge. So that avoided the whole probate thing. And it made it so that we could um we could sell the house, we could transfer the property, we could cash in the, you know, the bank accounts and stuff like that. But it took probate court a several month process to go and pull that thing apart and get it done right. 
if it were done right and it was the all the documents separated and there's a reason the documents are separated because that's the way the law is set up so you have to have them each correct and even though it doesn't look right even though you think well that's dumb why do you have a healthcare power of attorney and a financial power of attorney a power of attorney is a power of attorney well not so healthcare power of attorney financial power of attorney two separate documents that do separate things so you just got to keep things separate and keep it right um if it's not right, we go to probate court, we straighten it all out, but then we're in probate court. So let's avoid that and get it done right. As I'm reviewing people's estate plans, I make sure that they have the trust, the will, the power of attorneys and all that. And that's what I want to do. If you don't have your favorite estate planning attorney that's helping you, make it me. 855-500-TRUST, 855-500-TRUST, get your estate plan done. We have a two-week turnaround on it. I mean, if you're planning to go on a vacation in a month, just let's just get it done. 855-500-TRUST. You'll like my team. All right, we'll be right back here on The Ward on Wealth. All right. Sounds like this mic is on. So good. That means you can hear me. This is Gary Quackenbush on the Word on Wealth. Tomorrow, we have Ken Pecos. So I really want you to listen along. Um, the success we've had with Ken has just been absolutely phenomenal. And I was at a um, an event that Ken puts on every year, at least once a year. And there were about 150 people that were there. And Ken was going around and introducing me to you know, all of his people, which is really fun because he's going, this is scary. He's the guy, the Word and Wealth radio show that I'm on. And, and people are really excited asking questions about Word and Wealth and about my relationship with Ken and, you know, how that all got started, which is really super fun. But the people there are so loyal to him. I, because I, I asked my, my thing at a party is to, you know, because I don't know, I'm just not, I'm not like a super like social butterfly guy. I, 
I, I like to do fun things and be with people, but I'm not, you know, you go to a dinner party and you're kind of a stranger and then you realize there are probably other people that, that are strangers. And so what do you do? You walk around with your glass of ice water. Hey, what are you drinking there? Uh, ice water. Oh, okay. Not vodka and tonic. Mm, no, ice water. And to me, it's like, well, I'm going to walk around with a Coke or, or, or something to eat, you know, to have in my hands. And I just, it's like, and I know everybody's that way. It's just tough. So my question is usually, so how do you know Ken? How do you get involved with Ken? And that's what's a really easy conversation. And then when you get out, um, you, know, you, you can also, to get out of a conversation, you can do kind of the same thing. Like, you know, oh, let me, I'm going to go talk to so-and-so, or I'm going to go over here and grab this, and, you know, just kind of ways to get out of conversation. But it's pretty cool when you ask, you know, how, you know, how do you know Ken or, you know, like, why are you at this party? And that was a good conversation starter for me. So then people would talk about Ken and what a great guy he was and what he did for them. And some of that I was, I guess, I don't know, surprised is the word, but you know, how do you know Ken? Oh, he's our realtor. I said, oh, what, so what has he done for you? Well, he helped us he helped us buy a house or he helped us sell a home. It wasn't like, yeah, we do monthly transactions with Ken. You know, we sell a house every year, every six months. It's, it wasn't like that. It was these people that, yeah, Ken helped me buy my home. And so, yeah, he's, he's our realtor. And then he will take the time because he really enjoys, you know, talking and sharing. He takes the time to be on the show, you know, on uh, the word on wealth, which is just super cool. So he has always has ideas and he's kind of throwing ideas out. Um, usually a couple of days before the show, he's like, Gary, let's talk about this. I want to talk about this. Here's this new thing. So that's coming up on Wednesday. And then Thursday, of course, we've got Anthony, the financial guru. We'll have him back on on Thursday. Um, on documentation, um, if you don't know whether you've got all your stuff, really go down the list and realize, okay, you've heard Gary say this a bunch of times, is a living trust is the main document that controls your estate plan. That document's got to be done right, and it needs to say what you need to say. It doesn't have to be a hundred pages long. I mean, I rarely, when I put them together, even fancy ones, I rarely am getting over thirty pages. And yet, I see trusts that I review that you know that are you know, 75, 80, 90, 125 pages of documentation, and I go through them and look and realize half of it it just really doesn't need to be there. It's just, it's not relevant. Doesn't even apply. And yet it's this big, thick thing where if you ever did try to go through it, you wouldn't know what's appropriate, what's needed and what's not. So I'm not into overkill and, you know, the documentation that I've created and that I use and that I modify and constantly tweak works for, I mean, I still haven't had it not work. It, you know, what am I going to say? It works for anybody that's worth less than $25 million. Um, that's easy to say. But it's like it really it's it's easier to understand. Um, I do review trust for people quite often where I say, you know, tell me about your trust. And they go, I don't know. I, I tried to read it, but it's just, you know, it's all gobbledygook. And I look at it and it's not gobbledygook. It's just really, really, really long. And it just kind of repeats itself. And, it, and it's just super wordy, which I don't think that's necessary. Um, the reason I don't think it's necessary is because I've done it hundreds and hundreds of times and I've had clients pass away. I've done the trust administration, the distribution from their trust. We've had our, our trusts in court. We've had our wills in court. You know, it's been, it's like it stands the test of time. And then we update it as we need, as the law changes and for according to your needs. So I just, the trust is the main thing, but I really feel that it's not fair for you to be attorney dependent. Like, I don't know what this thing says. Let me call my attorney. First of all, you run the risk of getting a bill. Second of all, you may not even be able to get your answer because, you know, like everybody, we're all trying to make a living. And some of us are, you know, we're all, we're, we got things going, right? So what you think might be a simple question, you may not even want to pose the question because you may not even be able to get through. And you may think, well, that's kind of goofy. Well, what I would prefer is to have documents that you can read, that you can understand, and you read through, and there's some legal terminology that we have to use to make them so that they're legitimate and they stand the test of time, but they don't have to be overly complicated. And I just don't like trusts that are overly complicated. 
<laughs> because part of it is when you bring me a super overly complicated trust and I find out you're, you know, you're very wealthy, uh, but you're still under the, the limitations, even, you know, the limitations as we are estimated they'll be in 2026, then I go, your trust is, is just too much. And if you don't understand it, I mean, if you're like me, I hate stuff I can't understand. It drives me crazy. I don't want a contract that I can't read and understand, especially a trust, because that's my estate going to my kids. And if I can't understand it and it's my stuff, what's going to happen when it goes to my kids? So my opinion, if you can't read it, you know, basically you read through it and go, I'm just really kind of confused on this thing, then let's look at it and maybe we need to simplify things. And I don't mean... Yeah, it just not oversimplify, just make it so that it will do exactly what you need to do. It works during the incapacity. It works during, it works after you pass away. It protects money from like from in-laws getting your money. You know, sometimes you want your trust so that your daughter inherits money from you, but but you don't want her husband to have access to that money, even if your daughter had passed away. You know, those are things that you build in. So the trust isn't like this death instrument. The trust works during the incapacity. So we can say, well, it's a disability plan. It works during disability. Um, it is a distribution plan at death, and it may change depending on first death or second death. Um, it also is a, you know, this, this, it has the ability that while you're alive, it manages and controls your property now. So I think of it more as this is your, this is your body armor. It's your helmet. It's your gloves. It's your, you know, from a writing metaphor, it's your, it's your elbow pads and knee pads. It's like, it's all the things that you need to protect your family, protect your wealth so that it can transfer to your family as painless as possible. Um, it protects your wealth. If you became incapacitated, nobody's going to go have to run down to the court to get a conservator over you. They can deal with it by being the successor trustee. It's documentation done right is what makes the world easier for you as an incapacitated person. But if you're incapacitated, you may not even know what's going on, or you may be struggling to figure it out, but you can have your trust carry the load. Okay, I've had bunches of people come in and they come in with dad and dad's really struggling and not paying the bills and stuff and, and or pays the bills twice or three times. You get these stupid magazine subscriptions that say, you know, warning, this is your last issue in parentheses, that's what we'll be telling you in six months if you don't renew then, you know, so then you're renewing over and over. Just these things to trick and trip people up, which really annoys me. Okay, um, let's not get started. But I think what you want is a clear estate plan and you want the transition ability. So what happens, I've had people come in and dad will say, um, you know, it's my son, it's my daughter, they're super helpful to me. Um, but I want them to have more access because I think I need to step aside. I need help writing checks, paying my bills, doing my online stuff. What do I do? And because he has capacity still, what we do sometimes is have him resign as trustee or assign one of his kids to be a trustee with him, co-trustee. So we do an amendment to that effect. And that way he can still be co-trustee or he can just resign as trustee and let his daughter or son now manage his money because he trusts them. He still has the ability to challenge the decisions and the things that they're doing, but he's probably in a position where he just doesn't want to, but he trusts his child, his son or daughter, and wants to you know, put them, assign them to be his money caretaker person. And the trust allows that. So if the trust is done right, it protects him. He's now kind of out of the loop where he doesn't have to remember which bills have to be paid and what should be on auto pay because that's what gets confusing. Um, and I know many of you know what I'm talking about, the, the magazine subscription thing, the credit cards that come in the mail with free cash attached to them. And there's just a lot of trickery around our seniors because of, um, you know, typically seniors have more money than, uh, you know, than newly marrieds. Typically seniors have, you um, they process things slower than newly married people. It's just kind of, that's the world. Okay. This isn't being critical. I mean, I feel the same thing. It's like things slow down. Vision is not as good. My processing isn't as fast. I'm still smart, but it's like, there's just, you notice. And the older you get, the more you notice. So the trust makes it so there's a transition. It can go from you to your children, you to your successor trustee to help out. So estate plans are just get it in order. If you wait too late, it becomes really a nightmare. 
855-500-TRUST. If you don't have your favorite estate planner, make that me. 855-500-TRUST. You will love working with my team. They're awesome. Our turnaround time is typically two weeks, so we can get it done pretty quickly. 855-500-TRUST. Talk to you tomorrow with Ken Pegas right here on The Word on Wealth. Bye, everybody.